Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a snowflake. First, you want to start by centering your shirt using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. And what that does is it creates symmetry. So please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And I want to also remind you guys that I do have a Facebook group where you can share your tie dye with me. And I changed the name of it to Belladonna Dyes Community Facebook group, something like that. The link for it's down below in the description box. It's right underneath the Etsy link. So click on that and join the group and share your tie dye with me. As I was editing this tutorial, I realized the reason why I make so many spirals is because I can't stand centering shirts. This went on for about five minutes, you guys. I'm obsessive about it. It has to be completely smooth and as perfect as possible. Now decide where you want the center of your pattern to be. I don't like to put things down too low. Nothing looks good when it's sitting right on top of the belly button. So I usually come down about an inch or two from the underarm. And then you just want to airplane fold your shirt. Now that I have it folded, I like to clip it just to keep everything together. And if you've done this correctly, you're going to see seven folds on one side and two on the other. So at this point, I really don't have any idea what I'm doing. I'm just sort of making it up as I go. I've made some kaleidoscope tutorials in the past that looks sort of like a snowflake so I thought well I'll try that for this and I'm just sort of like doing an S pattern back and forth with the folds and then right here I thought well maybe I'll just scrunch the back part of it and then I thought uh, no maybe I won't so that's what I'm thinking right here and the whole time I'm doing this I'm thinking gosh what colors am I going to use Now that I decided on this is how it's going to be, I need to secure it. And for this one, I'm just going to use rubber bands. It's quick and easy. Well, we've made it through the first hurdle. Now we need to think about how are we going to dye this? Are we going to muck dye it or rack dye it? This is a lot of thick fabric here and I need to make sure that the dye is gonna get all the way through. So I decided that I'm going to rack dye it because that way I'm able to flip it over and check the back.
I left this part in because I thought some of you might get a kick out of it. This is what's going on in my mind all the time. Even when I'm not tie-dyeing, this bag of colors is rattling around in there all the time. Are any of you like this? So this is how I choose my colors for my tie-dye. After the ice melted, I came back and I checked it, and boy, that navy blue really took over, and I kind of thought it would, but I was hoping it wouldn't. And as you see, there is a lot of fabric that still needs dye on it, so I'm going to flip it over and repeat the process. For this round, I'm going to go directly on top of the fabric, only with the ice blue. I really wanted to have a chance to get inside all the fibers. I let that layer of ice melt and I've come back and now we're going to add the navy blue. And I'm going to put a layer of ice on and then a very gentle sprinkle of the navy blue because I don't want it to completely take over. And it's projects like these where I'm so thankful to have that ice maker. With Christmas coming up, it might be something you want to put on your wish list and tell your partner about. And I do have a link for it down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie dye so check that out. It's been 48 hours since the ice has melted, and now I wanna check it before I start rinsing it. I'm looking for saturation, and it looks pretty good. There are some light areas, but I wanna have the contrast of the light and the dark, but it looks pretty well saturated, so I'm just gonna go for it and give it a rinse. So you wanna start by using cold water, and that's gonna rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers, and then gradually increase your water up to hot, and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do two hot water cycles using Synthropol, and then I do a third hot water cycle using Millsoft, and I get both of those products from Dharma Trading Company, and then I put it in the dryer and I iron it, and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our snowflake ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And isn't it so beautiful? I'm really happy with the way this shirt turned out. It turned out exactly like I thought it would, and then some. I'm very pleased with the outcome. I love the color combination. It just makes me think of ice. And tie dye and snowflakes are similar. No two are ever the same. So as I had mentioned earlier, about the Facebook group, please join the group and share your snowflakes with me. This is the reason why I love ice dyeing so much. I could make all those fancy wigwags and all that stuff, but they take forever and they're just not as beautiful as all these color splits. I'm just in love with this shirt. 
So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.